In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Take your Bibles, and I want you to raise your Bibles up, and I want you to say this after me. Today, I choose to experience life. Life begins with salvation, and life is developed through spiritual growth. And life is shared through us being witnesses of his great love. This is the word of life, and this word of life is living in us. And this word of life is the light of all men. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank everyone also for praying for my lovely wife. Uh, she um, went through a little little uh, session uh, with the doctor, and she had to take a few days off. So we are just so very grateful and so thankful that uh, she's doing super, super great. And, uh, and I tell you, man, I had a little experience. I don't have time to go into it, but uh, I, I tell you what, I just... Uh, Really, really appreciate uh, her and who she is and what God is doing with her in her life. And I'm super glad that we are together in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, well, if you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And we're talking about kingdom basics. Kingdom basics. You know, we are in a season right now. Man, if you got your eyes on, if you got your ears on, if you got your spiritual uh, glasses on, you 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 got to be seeing a lot of stuff that's going on right now that is absolutely demonic, uh, and I'm not gonna get into it because I'm not taking sides. I'm just I'm, I'm I'm just here to we we're not here to take sides. We're here to take over. So uh, as the kingdom of God, I'm just saying that uh, you need to open your eyes and look through a lot of the surfacey stuff that's going on, and look and see spiritually the kinds of things that are being done and simply ask yourself, is that a godly thing or is it an ungodly thing as it relates to how things are being done and how things are, how people are behaving because we don't really fight against flesh and blood. The Bible tells us that. But um, Matthew 6 and 33 says this. It says, therefore, take no thought saying, uh, uh, 31 through 33 says, take no thought saying, what shall ye eat or what shall ye drink or whether so whether shall ye be clothed for after all these things do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Notice what it says in verse 33 it says, but seek ye first, what the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you all these things what things the things that were talked about earlier what you're going to drink where you're going to live what you're going to wear all of those things do the gentiles seek after but it says but you seek first the kingdom and all these things shall be added unto you now a couple of points on that number one what is the kingdom the kingdom is a place uh a, a place first of relationship it is a relationship that we have with our father, our father. It's a relationship. Secondly, your, your needs are not your concern. They are your father's concerns. I like it when it says your father already know you have need of such things, but seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added. So it's basically saying you shouldn't be concerned about those things. Allow your father. Well, not allow, but he, He's concerned, so let him do his job and you do your job. Your job is to seek first the kingdom and righteousness. His job is to supply and provide for your, for your needs. Man, I, I could give a benediction right now. Because if you really get, get a great grip on what that's saying, they're saying that all you need to do is focus on seeking the kingdom and God's righteousness, God's way of doing things. Figure out, okay, how would God have me to do this? What does the word of God say in this particular situation? What does the word of God say in, in that situation? When you're making decisions, when you're contemplating what to do next, when you're contemplating what moves to make, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, this is not a, a really it's a decision to decision point or major decision to the next major decision. It's a lifestyle. It's the lifestyle of the rich and famous, making it a, a active part of your life to, to do everything, finding out kingdom and finding out what God's righteousness is. Now, man has a righteousness, but, but the kingdom of God has a, has a level and God has his righteousness. What we want to do is match the righteousness of God 
in our life on a daily basis. And when we do that, we position ourselves for the addition culture. What is the addition? All these things shall be added unto you. So we'll have an addition culture, not a subtraction culture. When we, when we seek first the kingdom and put the priority system on making sure that we're walking out what God's plan is or, or how God would go about doing certain things versus how we want to do certain things. And I tell you, it takes practice uh, because we, we, we think sometimes the little or small things are not God's, he's too busy. No, God wants to be involved in your integral parts of your life as well. So I just consider that. So, um, so we're so, so thankful that we have an opportunity to connect and be a part of a kingdom system that works and kingdom is greater than any other system. I talked about that last Sunday. There's a greater system than any other system. And I said these things, there are four ways that you can make sure you're not, you're not deceived into going with or connecting to the wrong kingdom. There are four ways. First of all, through salvation. The first thing you want to do is get saved through God's plan of salvation. God's plan of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. God's plan of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. I'm going to say it one more time. How do you make sure you're not getting connected with the wrong kingdom? Because you'll see God's plan of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ, being born again. When you remove God's plan for salvation through his son, Jesus Christ, you are in a counterfeit system. Yes, you're in a counterfeit system. You could have all these other things, but if you remove Jesus, the Bible calls Jesus the chief cornerstone. In other words, he is the major block that holds it all together. You take Jesus out, there is no building, there is no block, there is no foundation. It is sinking sand. So you have to make sure that the only way you can make sure that you're not being deceived is that you make a, a mental note. You make a, a, a spiritual note. If, G, if God's plan for salvation through his son, Jesus Christ, is not a part of this uh, doctrine, then it is a fake, false, counterfeit system. And I'm going to say this, there are a lot of popular, uh, successful, seemingly successful, uh, rich, uh, uh, high, highfalutin, uh, people who are saying stuff like, well, there's more than one way to get to God. Well, the Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man gets to the Father but by him. Now, that, that, if that offends you, I'm sorry. But we're just basically doing this. I'm just doing Bible. I'm not doing humanism. I'm not, I'm not doing science, scientific stuff. I'm doing Bible. And the Bible says that, you know, that, that, that there's only one way to get to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. So number one, salvation through God's plan of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ, is your first way to make sure you're not in a counterfeit system. Number two, Jesus and his name. So I already said that. So you need the name of Jesus, using Jesus' name as a, as a, as a uh, uh, conduit for God operating in your life. Praying and, and, and using the name of Jesus uh, are all synonymous with the kingdom of God. They're synonymous. So you take Jesus' name out. You take Jesus as the, as the conduit for salvation. You're in a con. You're in a counterfeit system of kingdom. It's a counterfeit. The third thing is the Holy Spirit, our kingdom instructor. You know, he says, "I'll give you another Comforter, and he shall be with you, and he shall be in you." Boy, I tell you, there's a lot of spirits out there. But you want the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is given to you by Jesus Christ. He's coming to you, and he's going to take the Spirit of God on the inside of you, and he's going to put the Spirit of God on you. That Spirit uh, endues you with power, but it's also your teacher, your guide, your corrector, teaching you and leading and guiding you into all truth. So, And, and how do you know it's the right Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit will always point you back to the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will always 
teach in accordance to the word of God. Not going to be something outside on the outside coming up with some new, new gimmick, a new, some new something. It's not going to be new. It's going to be the same yesterday to today and forevermore. So when you get an instruction, you, you, you think you heard from the Holy spirit, uh, ask yourself one question. Does it line up with scripture? If you ask yourself that question, you'll never be tricked into operating and moving into a counterfeit kingdom, counterfeit kingdom. And then finally, fourth, um, the fourth thing, a tool that can help you avoid being in a counterfeit system is faith, faith, faith in the word of God. Faith is our kingdom currency, believing in his word in God's word above our thinking and senses, believing in God's word above our, our thinking and our senses, you know, smell, hear, see, taste, feel, you know, faith is outside of those sense realms. So when you're, when you're really operating in a, in an area of faith kingdom wise, you're going to be outside of the kingdom realm, but now your senses realm, but now let me say this, uh, it, it needs to be spirit led. Again, you believe that you were directed to do something by God. It should absolutely align with his word. And, and, and the best thing to do is go to the word and, and get some confirmation. Let the word confirm itself. You know, uh, let the word confirm itself. When you heard something that keeps you from running off and just doing stuff just because you, you thought you heard from God when it may have just been, you know, just, uh, you ate some pizza with some, some bad sausage on it or something. <laughs> but anyway, um, take the time to always evaluate when you hear from the Lord and take it back to the scriptures. And, and yeah, it's okay to get godly counsel because, uh, um, out of, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word should be established. So you should always bounce things off of a, a solid, firm, uh, a mentor or someone that's in the body of Christ that you trust and that are living it and doing it in Jesus name. So those are the four things I wanted to review those because right now there's a lot of counterfeit kingdoms out there. Uh, there's a lot of counterfeit kingdoms. There's a lot of counterfeit. Oh Lord, should I say it? Yeah. There's a lot of counterfeit kingdoms. There are a lot of counterfeit Christians. There are a lot of counterfeit, all kinds of stuff. So, um, you know, the greatest way for bankers to help train that their, their, their tellers is not to show them counterfeit money, but to show them real money and help them to understand and know how to recognize real money so much so that by the time they're going through their tra training process, they recognize counterfeit money, not from looking for counterfeit money, but they recognize counterfeit by looking at the authentic. So what we want to do is we need to make sure that we're, we're, aligning our life with the authentic word of God. And in doing so, it helps the unauthentic stick out. That's good. That's good. It'll, it'll help the unauthentic. It, you, you'll hear something, you'll go, mm, 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 mm. It, that's kind of, mm, mm, it don't fit. Because why? Because you know exactly what the word of God says. So in your life, you make sure that you're doing that and spending time so that you really are well rehearsed and well versed in the word of God. And, and listen, you, you can't, I'm not going to say you can't know it all, but just grab what you, what you can grab, meditate and grow in what you can grow in and don't judge it based on what somebody else can do or can't do. You do you and allow God to work in you and on you where you are. And yeah, strive to go beyond that, but don't put pressure on yourself to try to match somebody else's place, whether it's in the performance or whether it's in whatever they're doing. I always share this. I share this with my son. And remember in Psalms one, it talks about the fact that, and ye shall have fruit and you shall produce in your season, not somebody else's. Somebody else could be producing right now. And that's cool. You should help celebrate them, but it does not mean that you're not going to be successful. It simply means that you can stay focused to prepare to be fruitful in your season. Just keep grinding and keep doing what you do because your process, your program is got in God's hand produces on the time frame for your season. So don't let somebody else's production or whatever, uh, get you down because you got a season and it's going to be just as fruitful, just as productive, just as, as outstanding. Uh, and so they can celebrate you when you hit your, when you hit your fruit season, Amen. praise the Lord. So, um, so here we, here we are. What? 
So what makes up a kingdom? What makes up a kingdom? Number one, every kingdom has a king and every kingdom has a Lord. The king is the embodiment of a kingdom representing its glory and its nature. Authority flows from the king and the word of the king is supreme. In other words, if the king says it, it's down. I a movie I used to watch, uh, 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 um, uh, but I keep hearing this, so let it be said, so let it be done. That's, that, that was, uh, was that Moses? That was Moses, uh, uh, Charleston Heston and, and the Ten Commandments. And, and uh, Pharaoh at that time, you know, he walked around and, and whatever he said went. He was the king. He was the Pharaoh. And so if he's, went, and then once he says something, he come right back behind it and he said, so let it be said, so let it be done. Because when he says it, it's law. When he speaks it, it becomes uh, uh, authentic, it becomes law, it becomes the rule, it becomes the standard. So as it relates to that, every king has a kingdom and the authority flows from the king and the word of the king is supreme. The range of his rule comes from infinite place to an infinite place. So as it relates to God, his rule and reign comes from an infinite place and it goes to an infinite place. It comes from way over that way as far as you could ever imagine or think, even beyond that, and it goes that way as far as you could ever imagine. So his rule and reign is infinite because he is the king of king and lord of lords. He is all that. Psalms 90 and 2. If you look at Psalms 90 and 2, you'll kind of see the, the infant aspect of God and who he is. Psalms 90 and 2 says this. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even, watch this, from everlasting, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Now that's the king, that's the king of the kingdom of God right there. That's the king. He's the God. He's the head. And it says from everlasting. But then it goes beyond that and says to everlasting. Everlasting goes on forever from that direction and goes on forever in that direction. You'll never get around that. You'll never go under that, over that, or, 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 or you can't go through it. It, it. it is what it is. So as it relates to that, we understand that God's rule and reign is infinite. Watch this. Because wow, he's our king of the kingdom. Matthew 6, Matthew 6, 9 and 10. Matthew 6, 9 and 10. And y'all know this very well. It says, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Watch this. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where? In earth as it is in heaven. So we're seeing here, our father, he's the king. He's the head. He's over the kingdom of God. And he's given us permission to pray that. Jesus said we can pray, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Hey, I'm just declaring right now in Jesus' name. I want you to put this in your daily confession. God's kingdom is here now. God's kingdom is here now. Because if it's one thing we need more than anything else in this world, it is the kingdom of God manifested. We want it manifested in our government. Well, that's right. We want to just blow it, bust it wide open. We want the power of God. We want the strength of God. We want the word of God. We want the move of God to bust the government of this nation wide open. Yes, we do. And if you don't want that, I'm sorry. But we're kingdom, and that's what kingdom does. Kingdom don't come to move in. Uh, kingdom comes to take over. We're not coming to, to take part. We're coming to take over. Everybody else trying to take over. So we need to because we have the authority to do it. By how? What authority? You talking all that smack. Well, the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. The Bible says the kingdom of God ruleth over all. So if, if we exercise our rights, then we can come in and have dominion. It's in Genesis. Authority is in Genesis. Initial plan of God is to have authority, have dominion, and, and, and oversee and cultivate and operate as the driving leadership of this world. And that was, that was what God's original plan was. Now, um, praise God for that. So every kingdom has a king and a lord. Number two, every kingdom has a territory. 
a territory. And I think I've kind of given that from everlasting to everlasting can give you a, a hint, but territory represents the domain or the range of space that the king exercises total authority. So the territory of its, re, uh, of its resources and people are all personal property of the king. So, so you're born again, you're in the kingdom of God, you are God's personal property. Hey, man, if I'm going to belong to anybody, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and if I'm going to belong to anybody, I'm going to belong to the kingdom of God and God our Father. Now, uh, I belong to my wife. My wife belongs to me. But together, we belong to him in Jesus' name. So as it relates to that, you can't be in a better place of being in a situation where you are uh, under the oversight and under the ownership of the kingdom of God and the king himself. So the king by right owns all and therefore is considered Lord over all. The word Lord simply means ownership by right. Lord is only given to one who is sovereign owner. Now, I, I have a text I want to read. It's Isaiah 55 and 11. Isaiah 55 and 11. Notice what it says. It says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Now remember, remember now I gave the example of the Pharaoh and he said, so let it be said, so let it be done. Why? Because his word became law. It was the realm of, or, or, or the, 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 the sphere of its control. His word is his sphere of his control. So now watch this. It says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall uh, prosper in the thing where unto I sent it. Now that's powerful. He said, my word will not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish uh, that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing from which I sent it. Now, Let's talk about that. If there are areas in your life that are broken, impoverished, lacking, in distress, then there's nothing greater you can do than send in the word of God that reverses that situation. He said, I call those things that be not as though they were. So you can get a scripture that God has highlighted or he has brought to your remembrance or he has quickened to you about some area in your life. And your job is simply to say what he says. Why? Because when you say what he says, you have allowed the kingdom of God to enter in to that particular area. And it becomes a part of the kingdom realm. It becomes a part of his territory. Well, that's good. So his territory expands to wherever his word is planted. Ooh, that's good. So, 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 so the, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead and the same power that caused a dead man to walk out, uh, hop out of a cave, being three days and smelling or four days and smelling, I don't know, four days and stinking and caused him to come out. The same resurrection power is available to any of us as it relates to the kingdom of God. And we can take that and expand the kingdom's territory. What are we here for now in this situation, this generation? We are in this generation uh, because we are the ones who are to expand the kingdom of God's kingdom. How? By sending the word. And he said, it'll prosper into the place wherever I sent it. And it shall accomplish whatever I please. Woo! Man, you need to get that. So we can be conduits and working for the kingdom of God in planting and sending and allowing God's word to flow through us into certain areas. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that your word permeates the White House, 
that your word covers the Supreme Court, that your spirit is moving in Congress and the House and the Senate, and that your power is arresting all demonic sickness and disease and, 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 and systems and demons and spirits that are not of God and slapping them flat to the floor. In Jesus' name, I get a little aggressive. Yeah, slap them. If, so, if you, so if you see somebody slip and fall in D.C., they just got slapped. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Just like, oh, they, oh, get her up. She, need, uh, she done slipped and fell. Help her up. She didn't fall. She got slapped in the spirit. We just released it. God said <laughs> that his word shall not return void. I don't, I don't know if you can find slap them to the floor in the word. I don't know. I haven't seen that. Maybe that's in there somewhere, but help me. But I'm just saying it's a good purpose. It's a good plan because the kingdom of God, uh, Jesus, the kingdom, uh, the government of this world, the government shall rest on his shoulders. So we want to make sure that we, we're positioning everything right. I about got excited there, so I better move on. So all kingdoms have space in which they are va va valid. And I gave some examples of the United Kingdom and folks like that, police. I gave all of those as examples. And so all of those are representing territory. So uh, God's kingdom has its realm of jurisdiction or territory. It is the territory by which we choose, watch this, to allow his word to be the authority in our lives. Don't you know that's the same thing as Matthew 6 and 33? Because what we're doing in Matthew 6 and 33 is seeking first the kingdom of God. We're putting the priority system on our decisions, the priority systems on our moves or whatever we're doing. The priority system is God's way of doing things. So what we're doing in essence is we're expanding the kingdom into the areas. When we seek first the kingdom, we're actually saying, I'm going to pull this situation into the kingdom. And I'm going to pull it in here and I'm going to see what God says about it. And I'm going to see how God wants to handle it from his perspective, righteousness, from his perspective, word, from his perspective, spirit of God and power. I think that's wonderful. So the more of that we can do in these coming days, the better off we're going to be. Because I tell you right now, them demons is loose and running rampant out there in the world. And we got to make sure that we're doing and, and operating in a way that we need to operate so we don't inadvertently give authority to the wrong uh, leadership. I'm going to say that again, so that we don't ad inadvertently give our, um, uh, give the wrong uh, opportunity to the wrong leadership to lead us in our lives. Amen. In Jesus name. Now, Matthew four and four says this, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live. Watch this by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So our lives should be operated as a lifestyle of what God says. It's a lifestyle of what God is saying. It's a lifestyle of what God said. It's a lifestyle of what God is saying to you to do in Jesus name. So God does not operate outside of his word. I think a lot of times we don't understand that. We think God just does stuff anywhere, all the place, all over. No, he does not. He does not operate outside of his word. And that's why we want to keep his word in as much as we can, because we're keeping God in it when we keep his word in it. Why? Because he and his word are what? One and the same. So when we're speaking the word of God, we're allowing God, the presence of God, the spirit of God, the power of God to operate in that realm in Jesus name. And that's good. Now that's good. It is our connection to kingdom living. The word of God is our connection to kingdom living. Um, I don't have the scripture down, but he said, I sent my word and my word has healed them and delivered them from all destruction. So he said, I, he notice he said, I sent you a doctor and the doctor would heal you from, I'm not saying doctors don't heal, but in this, in this particular case, he said, I sent my word and my word has healed them and delivered them from all destruction. So his word is his, uh, is the conduit or it is the element. It is the resource that we have in this world to operate and allow God to be in our, uh, situation. Watch this. This is a word based system. I say it all the time. So listen, the greatest thing you do and the easiest thing you can do. It's just speak the word of God over something. 
the greatest thing you can do, the easiest thing you can do is speak the word of God over something. Now watch this. You, you don't need any power to do that. That's, that's not, that's not your human power. You don't, the only power you need is to open your mouth and speak the word of God. That's, that's your part. And, and he does the rest. So, um, so as it relates to that, God does not operate outside of his word. And it is our connection to kingdom living. Psalms 138 and two says this, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise the name for the loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Now that's, that's, that's pretty powerful. Because he's saying how he, he's magnified his word over all thy name. So, man, look, that's the most powerful ingredient you can interject into any situation. Come on, y'all. This is not religion. This is relationship. Kingdom is about relationship. It is not about religion. Religion just does a bunch of stuff for religious sake, for image, for uh, checking the box, for making sure that we do certain things, trying to get God to love us or trying to get God to move on our behalf. So we're going to do this, this, and this. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to read the scripture and I'm going to confess them things. And then that's going to make God do. No, 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 no. That's religion. What you want is you want to operate the word of God in your life, operate it in your life, not um, not sit back and, and use it as a broadcasting tool. That's, I don't, I don't have enough time to get into it, but it's different. Uh, operating the word of God in your life is a lifestyle. Man shall not live by bread alone, but man shall live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So in other words, you should be living by what God says. Same thing. It's called kingdom living in the name of Jesus. We're talking about kingdom living. So, so we see here, we see here that every kingdom has a king and a Lord. Every kingdom has a territory. And, and, and with that territory, every kingdom, watch this, every kingdom has an enemy. Oh, every kingdom has an enemy. Every kingdom has an enemy. Every kingdom has an enemy. Turn to 1 Samuel 17, 45. And in, in, that, in that kingdom, one of the things that I want to share is this. David, David, when he took on Goliath, David, watch this. He, he trusted the covenant that he had with God. That God's promise in his covenant will help him when it came time for him to go up against his enemy. Now you need to hear this because whatever enemy that's coming against you, it's not you fighting in your own strength. It's not you fighting in your own uh, ability, in your own thinking. Listen, I don't care what it is you're uh, 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 endeavoring to do, whether it's to, uh, to whatever it is. Don't do it in your own thinking, in your own strength. Do due diligent stuff, but go to the covenant of God. And his covenant is your real working power. Amen. Not your thinking and not your ability. In Jesus' name. That's good. So now watch this. David depended on the covenant with God to defeat the enemy. The word of the covenant is a weapon. Jesus is the Lord of hosts, the commander in chief of the angelic host of, of the kingdom of God. So he's got angels and everything. And Jesus has oversight over all of this stuff. Watch this. There is a rank and file of authority in every kingdom. Every kingdom has kings and it has serfs. It has servants. It has workers. It has uh, administrators. It has uh, war warriors, all that stuff. Every kingdom has that kind of thing. So watch this. Um, demon possession and all this kind of stuff means to be completely taken over by a demon spirit or soul or body, all that kind of stuff. All that stuff is just folks working for a demonic system. It, they have allowed themselves to be intertwined in the agenda of the kingdom of darkness. So in kingdom basics, every kingdom has an enemy 
And I want you to know today that you're delivered from the kingdom of darkness. You are delivered from the kingdom of darkness. Now, I told you to turn to 1 Samuel 17, 45. Watch this. Notice what David said. Then David said to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear. He told the giant, you came to me with a sword and a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. So now, now David said, listen, you, you come to me with, with physical stuff. I'm coming to you with the name, a name that's above every name. Now you think he's going to say, well, a name? What's a name going to do? Well, if it's the right name, it's going to do a lot. Watch this. <laughs> you go to the bank and you go and you go and sit down and you give them, uh, uh, let's just say, um, uh, you going in there on your own and you're just going to try to get something done and it may happen. It may not happen. Who knows? But if you go in there with a name, uh, so-and-so sent me in here to meet with you and told me to tell you, uh, that they recommended that I come to see you. Now, the name that you give them may be, uh, a chairman of the board of the bank. See, that, that breaks a whole lot of stuff up. If the chairman of the board sends you to the bank and tell them to let them know that I'm sending you over there, that name just broke through any issues or circumstances or red tape or complications or maybe shortcomings. It changes the whole perspective. Why? Because you gave them a name that they have to honor and that they have to step to. And in the same manner, listen, David said, you came to me with spears and shields and all of this kind of stuff. I'm coming to you with the name, the name of the Lord. And he is the Lord of hosts. And I'm coming to you and I'm going to take care of business by using that name. Well, that's a covenant name. It's a name that he was given as a covenant. Watch this. So what is the covenant? Covenant is formal binding agreement. It is a promise. It is a contract. It is a deal, a settlement, or an understanding. So what is the word of God? The word of God is a binding agreement. It is a promise. It is a last will and testament. It's a contract. It is a deal that he's made with us. And for whoever received Christ, he just made a deal with you if you receive Christ. Bless God. Let's make a deal. <laughs> Hey, let's make a deal. He said, let's make a deal. He said, look, I'm going to go to hell for you. You don't have to go. I'm going to get on the cross. You don't have to get on the cross. I'm going to go to hell. You don't have to go. I'm going to come back and I'm going to bring all power in my hands and I'm going to raise up and I'm going to go sit with the father. I'm going to intercede for you. Then I'm going to come back. All of y'all have received me. I'm going to come back and get you and we're going to spend eternity together and eternal life. And we're going to come back to earth and we're going to have a new heaven and a new earth. Then he said this deal or no deal. Now you got a choice. You can flip that box up and say deal. <laughs> or you can flip it back down and say no deal. And you can go gamble some more on your, on your eternal life. We got a lot of people who for greed, for a lack of understanding, for deception, uh, for, uh, uh, all these kind of things for out of bondage are flipping that box back down and going and rolling some more and taking a chance on losing what God has get, given them. So I'm saying to you that this, this contract, David knew he had a, 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 a contract and a deal with God that would allow him to win in circumstances that seemed to be bigger than him. Yeah. Woo! Seemed to be stronger than him. Yeah. Seemed to be greater than him. But what he had in his pocket was bigger and greater than Goliath and all of his weapons. It was the name of the Lord God. Watch this. Goliath's size frightened the Israel, uh, Israel's army. He was nine feet, 10 inches tall. His coat of mail was weighed 125 pounds. So his, just his vest weighed 125 pounds. David said to Goliath, I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts and God of the armies of Israel whom thou hast defied, whom thou hast defied. Watch this. 
David expected the angels of the Lord to show up. Why? Because he had already gone through situations before. Well, God has shown up. Uh, uh, he, he showed up when he was tending his sheep and a lion came in and a, and a, and a bear came and, and he did warfare against them and killed those things. And, and, and he was, David was a small little boy. He wasn't no big giant man at all. He was scrawny. He was thin. But he was using the power of God even to protect the sheep that he was given authority or assignment over. Now, what is that saying to you? Whatever you're over right now, you should be given the power of God, uh, the authority to help you even in the situation that you're in. Why? Because sooner or later, it's going to go from that small circumstance to a Goliath situation. And so if you've handled those other circumstances by using the covenant that you have with your God, and you use the covenant that he has given you and the authority and the name and the word that he's placed on the inside of you, when the giant shows up, you ain't scared, you're not intimidated, you step right to it and call out the name of the Lord of hosts and go to work because you know it's worked for you before and it'll work for you again. It makes no matter what the size of the enemy is or what the size of the circumstance is. Why? Because the name and the covenant and the power and the authority is always bigger than whatever shows up. In Jesus' name, amen. David was calling those things that be not as though they were. Look at Romans 4, 17. That's really what that is. Romans 4, 17 says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before whom him whom he believed. And over even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things that be not as though they were. You got to be, you got to be courageous in this season and you're going to have to say some things that need to be said. And then you're going to, yeah. And then what, uh, listen to what I'm saying. You're going to have to say some things that need to be said that are seen, but then you're going to have to say some things that need to be said that are not seen. How calling things that be not as though they were. And then you're going to have to call some things like they are. You're going to have to call the truth in situations where truth need to be told. And then you're going to have to shut down and by calling out things that are not there, you're going to have to call some things forward that are not there, but you have the authority to call those things that be not as though they were. God said, let there be light. And there was light. He called light forward. He said light be, but he called light to be in darkness. He called things that be not as though they were. Light is, light be, and it wasn't being. It, I mean, it wasn't there at first, so he called it from, from the spirit. He called light, and light produced. When you're doing that, you're not speaking out of your own power. You're not speaking out of yourself. You're speaking out of the spirit of God that is on the inside of you. And that's where that's coming from. People looking at it, what are they talking about? They don't lost their mind. No, 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 no. I'm not coming from my mind. I'm coming from the mind of Christ. That's where we're coming from. We're coming from the mind of Christ. And that's how it works in the name of Jesus. Amen. So uh, in Malachi, the Lord of hosts, Sabaoth, the Lord of angelic armies, is mentioned more than 20 times. More than 20 times. In Malachi 3, 8 and, 8 and 10, it says, shall a man rob God? Wherein have they robbed God? Through tithes and offerings. Now, I'm going to look that up right quick. I'm going I'm to I'm look that up. Malachi. 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 <laughs> Malachi. Malachi 3, 8 through 10. I want, you to, I, want you to, I want you to put your eyes on this. It says, uh, will a man rob God, yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? It says, in tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. But it says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. See, that's the Lord of hosts. The word host means the Lord of a lot, of a lot of folk. You know, you have a host of folks showing up, you have a host of this, a host of that. It means you have a bunch of stuff. The Lord of hosts is the host of angelic angels. He is the Lord of a host of angels. And they're rolling with him. 
in every capacity that he needs for them to roll, they're rolling and ready to go. One angel can do some serious damage to thousands and thousands and thousands. So he only need but one, but he got a host of angels. That's how we know nobody going to win when they come against God. When Jesus show up, he going to show up with a host of his angels. He going to show up with a host of his saints and we're going to kick everything and everything that ain't God out. And they're going to lose. Let me help you. At the end of the book, everybody and everything that goes against God loses. And that's the truth. That's the word. It's going to lose. So I'm not going to get into that even more. You, you understand what that's saying. So as it relates to that, David depended on the covenant with God to defeat the enemy. Next, the word of the covenant is a weapon. Look at 1 Samuel 17 and, and 29. And David said, 1 Samuel 17 and 29, it says, And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Now watch this. In Hebrew, the word cause means speech or word. Now, now that makes a little bit more sense. If the word cause in Hebrew means speech or word, watch this. David asks, is there not a word? Is there not a speech given? David literally said, is there not a word meaning a word of the covenant? David used the speech part of his covenant as his first weapon. He spoke. He told, he told the enemy exactly what he was going to do with him. And the very first thing he did was he, he spoke and aligned himself with the covenant of God by speaking the name of the Lord, the Lord of hosts. I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. That's how I'm coming. I'm coming to you in a covenant perspective. So he, first and foremost, he aligned himself with God and his authority by bringing the kingdom with him by speaking kingdom word. That's good stuff. No, no one whom David asked agreed with him that there was a covenant word that would defeat the enemy. Only King Saul believed him. And that was after David told him about killing the lion and the bear and God's word of covenant. So once he, once, once, once Saul heard him speak of the covenant and once Saul saw his determination and commitment to the kingdom and heard his testimony. He overcome by the word of the lamb and blood of the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. He gave him a testimony and he gave Saul a testimony to Saul said, get his boy some, get his boy some armor, get his man some stuff so he can get on out there. I, 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 I believe in what he's saying. And so, and ultimately had to take all that stuff off. Cause he said, I can't fight in another man's armor. I got to fight with what God gave me. You got to fight with what God gave you. Don't be going around trying to put on what other folk put on. Don't be going around trying to be what other folks are. Don't be trying to fit and match what everybody else is fitting and matching because it works for them. Because what might work for them might not work for you. What you want to do is ask God how you need to go fight. You need to ask God what you need to be successful with the fight you fixing to take on. Praise the Lord. I hope everybody listening to that. That's good stuff over there. We praise the Lord. I, I could take, turn that around to some folk. <laughs> yeah. It ain't about what everybody else doing. It's about what, what God gave you and God gave you something that they ain't got. Mm -hmm. See that you, you trying to be what they are. You looking at everybody else and trying to fi follow them and, and look like them and all that. Look at him. They wish they had what you got. They just ain't saying it to you. But yeah, you got something special. Don't demean or put down what you have and what you got trying to be like other folk. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. David had tested God's word as a weapon. So he already knew what his word was, what the word of God could do. Now, watch this. Jesus is the Lord of hosts, the commander in chief of the angelic host. Look at John 1 14. Jesus is the word who became flesh. Now y'all, y'all ought to know these now. Y'all, this, this right here is, is fundamental foundational stuff right here. You get this, you ready to throw some rocks at anything. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, John 1 14, notice what it says. And the word was made what? Flesh. And dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory uh, as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. The word became flesh. The word 
was made flesh. The word was made flesh. And I heard a, 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 a man of God say this one time. He said, that's what everybody is looking for. Everybody in the world, I don't care what they declare and I don't care what they confess and I don't care whether they say they like God or don't like God, believe God, don't believe God. Everybody wants to see this become flesh and walk amongst us. That's what they want. They want to see manifestation of the word in flesh. And when they see that, buddy, that's, that turns people on. It draws people to God. That's what you want to do. You want to be operating in the word being made flesh. So watch this. The voice says, the voice took on flesh. So, so the word says the word took on flesh. Get that. The word says the word took on flesh. The word says I'm taking on flesh. The word spoke. And the word spoke saying what the word was going to do. And the word did it. Ah, I get it. That just keep going over and over and over. So soon as we will be in heaven and the great teacher, Jesus will teach us from the word. When we get to heaven, we're going to get, we going to get the word at a level. Ooh, at a whole nother level, man. And that's what we're going to be doing. Growing and learning the word from the word. That's just powerful. That's just crazy. I'm, I'm just enjoying it. So now, so now Jesus is the word and the word of life. John 1, 1 through 4. John 1, 1 through 4. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Yeah, the life of the word being lived out was the light of men. And that's what people are wanting to see today. We need the word becoming life in front of all of the folks in D.C. That's what we need. We need the word of God. Um, you're not going to get away from this one. I'm, 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 I'm going to speak a little bit. You ain't going to get away from this one, what I mean by that. You're going to either be standing on the word and believing and trusting God, are you going to be deceived into standing with the enemy? There is no, we, you, y'all listen to me now. I'm speaking prophetically. You cannot carve this up no more. The days of carving word and spending sliding life and world and word and a little bit of this and like, yeah, there's a little bit of this the good and then some bad, you know, but this is okay. And then there's a little bit of good over here. We had to overlook it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's going to be straight word now. <laughs> it's going to be straight word. That's it. No more halfing and hashing. No more classing and slicing, slicing and dicing. No, you either in the word or you not. And that's all of these pseudo circumstances and situations. They are either in the word or they are not. And if, it, hey, it, let God be true and, and every man a liar. Let's just stand on, it's kingdom time, baby. And that's why I say it's the year of the kingdom. I believe that's what God is saying to us. This is the year of kingdom. It's over. And if you got any kind of spiritual sense, you'll see that the enemy is frantically pushing his agenda in everything right now. Why? Because he knows. He knows he ain't got no more time. So he's pushing all of his agendas at once. <laughs> and if you got any kind of spiritual sense, you can see that. He pushing all of his agendas at once. All of them. And, and, and using excuses and I'm going to blame it on this. I'm going to blame it. Well, we got to push all this stuff because this or because of that. We got to push all this stuff on you. We got to give all this stuff to you. Why? Because of this, because of that. No, that's the devil pushing his, all of his agendas at one time. Why? Because he out of time and he knows it. So he's pushing all of this stuff at us. And, you know, don't send me no letters because I ain't going to read them no how. <laughs> In Jesus' name. So uh, uh, how much time I got left? I'm out? Out of time? Okay. I'm going to close with this. Uh, and this is a good place to close. Um, 
there is rank and file of authority in every kingdom. Every king got rank and file. You know, like I said, there's, there's a king, there's a king servants, there's a, a servants, there's, you know, cooks, there's all kinds of stuff. So watch this. The rank and file of, of satanic kingdoms is in Ephesians 6 and 12. Y'all know this, Ephesians 6, 12. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We can stop right there. We got a lot of people that want to fight flesh and blood, people, but not paying attention to spirit behind people. I'm going to leave that. But against principalities, that's one. Against powers, that's another. Against rulers of darkness of this world, that's another. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. So I don't have time to go through these, but maybe I will later that I can break each one of these down and kind of explain to you exactly what their rank and file is. But now you got to understand this, and this is an important point. I read this so that I could give you a, a, a mirrored example. So um, the devil cannot come up with anything new. He doesn't know, he doesn't have the knowledge capacity to come up with something new. So what he does is he copies God's systems. God uses people. He sees that and he tries and use people. Uh, God has words that he uses as a part of the conduit for his success in our, in the kingdom for us. Satan uses words to try to get us to get adapt and adopt, to use those words that are counterproductive to what God has for us. Why? Where did he get that? He got it from God. He watched God's system work. He knows how God's system works. So he can't come up with anything new because God created everything. <laughs> God created, Satan can't come up with anything new because God has already created everything. So the only thing that he's left to do is to copy what God does and pervert it and twist it into an a, a antichrist, anti-God thing. That's why a lot of people get to see because it has some elements of kingdom to it. It has some elements of God's creation to it, but it's perverted, it's twisted. It's twisted. He can't come up with something new. He's, he can only copy what God has done. So with that in mind, uh, a Christian, watch this, uh, a Christian cannot be demon possessed. Not a Christian. A Christian is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things will not become new. But now a Christian can give their thinking and their thought process over to a demonic uh, issue. And remember now, as a man thinketh, so is he. So he can, he can get in caught up in stuff that's not godly simply by ha having his mind twisted. The Bible says that if the gospel be here, it be here to them that are lost, whose minds have been blinded, whose minds have been blinded, not the eyes, their thinking has been impacted. Their thinking has been blinded. When you start accepting things that you know is not God, your mind has been blinded. When you start embracing something that you know is sin, you know it's not God, but you're embracing it because it's the way of the world, your mind has been blinded. So I'm just telling you, that's why you got to uh, stay in the word of God. Roman tells us that we got to uh, be transformed, be not conformed or blinded um, to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. The mind is the battlefield in Jesus name. So as it, as it relates to that, I'm going to close right here. We're going to continue to talk about this kingdom stuff. But this is going to impact you. I'm telling you now, this is going to impact your life. It's going to show us where we're hurting. It's going to show us where we're compromising. It's going to show us the world. And it's going to show us the kingdom of God. And I believe that being able to show what kingdom is and what God's kingdom principles are and how it works will help us to recognize ourselves and understand that we're putting up with a whole lot of mess that we shouldn't be putting up with simply because we're not exercising our kingdom rights. And I'm telling you now, once you know who you are, you can't unknow who you are. Woo! Once you know who you are, you can't unknow who you are. You know, the word of God uh, 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 calls us and tells us who we are. The word of God tells us what we can do, and the word of God tells us what we can be. And then God stands over his word and watches his word to perform it in our life. Woo!
<laughs> I'm telling you right now, this is great stuff. And I'm just looking forward to us uh, going on to the next level of talking about kingdom because God got some other stuff for us. That's going to be right down home for us to help us to get beyond this pandemic stuff and get ready to get out there in the world and reach the loss. Because just like the devil knows he's out of this, we should understand and know that it's time for us to move his urgency to do what he's trying to do is a sign for us to pick up the pace and get out there and do what we need to do. It's a, it's a sign. So if you're here today and you've never received Jesus as Lord of your life and you would like to make that transition into God's kingdom, then it's very simple. I'm going to pray a prayer and you just pray the prayer after me. I'm going to give you some instructions. Just say this after me, dear God, uh, I call on you now to come into my heart. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I confess you as Lord of my life. I want to thank you for allowing me to be a part of kingdom. And I believe that you have caused me to be victorious and I receive it now in Jesus name. Well, if you prayed that prayer, you just got born again, right? Regardless of whether you felt some or not, you just got born again. Now, God has some instructions he wants for you. And the first and foremost, you need to find you a good Bible teaching church. Secondly, you need to get baptized. And thirdly, you need to get involved, get in, find out what God's gift and talent is for you. Exercise that gift and talent and allow your gift and talent to be fruitful in your season. Don't look at anybody else. Don't look at what nobody else is doing. Look, the moment you get born again, you're planted by the rivers of water and you're bringing forth your leaves. Your leaves also shall not wither and whatsoever you put your hands to shall prosper if you're operating with God's plan and his purpose. So you got to realize and figure out what that purpose is. And, and I just tell you, I just think that you'll see an amazing event take place in your life this year, this year of kingdom, you'll see something major happen. Secondly, if you're here and you have given your life to Christ, but for whatever reason, you kind of just kind of walked away from God because the, you know, the pandemic turns you off or you had an issue with relationship or you just, you know, financial stuff. Listen, just turn and get back in fellowship with God. Listen, you, okay, I'll say that. You wasn't doing what you were supposed to do, claiming that you were saved and born again, and you wasn't doing what you were supposed to do. So don't, 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 don't walk away from the system because it didn't work because you wasn't working it. So get back up get back in line. Let's do it this time. My, 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 my greatest conf confession is this, is that I got to a place in my life where I, I was broke, busted, and disgusted. And I turned to God and I said, God, look, I'm going to do it your way. And, and if they come get me, I'm gonna, he, I said, I'm going to tithe. I'm going to do everything that, that you've given me as a direction to do to make, give me an opportunity to succeed. I'm going to give you the greatest opportunity to impact and, and to do what you said you're going to do in my life. When I, and then I said this, I said, if they, if, if they take me to jail, you better come get me out of jail. Because I was like, I'm going to tithe and, you know, I'll, I'm going to try to pay the bills and do all the kind of stuff. But I'm going to tithe. And I started doing that 20 something years ago and I never looked back and they never had to come get me and get me out of jail. Praise God. So I'm just saying to you that you may have not been doing what you really should have been doing when you considered yourself doing things God's way. And only, you know, that. So I will say this, let's, let's, uh, let's rededicate our lives and just follow me in this prayer. Dear father, I repent. I recognize I'm going the wrong way and I've been doing things the wrong way and I make a firm decision to stop now, turn and go back in the right direction and get back in fellowship with you and get back into intimacy with you and, and do like the Bible says, every, uh, living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God and, and, and make this a lifestyle, not just a moment to moment uh, experience. In Jesus name. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, then man, I'm telling you, you just rededicated your life. We're happy for you, excited for you. And we know that you're going to see great results. And so just drop us a line. If you need any information, if you need anything from us, we'll be more than happy to help you. If you don't have a church home, listen, consider Living Word Church, whether we're doing it online and we will continue to do it online. We're already working on that, that part, but, uh, or local uh, at the local church location, man, I tell you what, uh, God is doing great things. And he has great things ahead for you. But whatever you do, don't do nothing. Because if you do nothing, you'll get nothing. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. And that's, that's a negative report. So 
in the name of Jesus, we just declare now and get you do your find your church and get up, get in the word and a lot of Holy Spirit to help you in Jesus name. If you if you've never been filled with the spirit, with the Bible evidence of speaking with new tongues, that's for every born again believer. Uh, the, the goal is not speaking in tongues. The goal is to be empowered. But for you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And also you can pray in the spirit to intercede for your loved ones and pray over your own life and pray, pray out the plan of God for your life. You can praise God in a supernatural way, which is just awesome, especially in a corporate setting to praise and worship God supernaturally. It's just an awesome experience. And so, and then the empowerment is, is, is the icing on the cake. It's really what God really wants to do and empower you to live and to succeed and to go forward in ministry and in life. And that's a great empowerment to do that. And uh, so praise the Lord. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. I think I got everything. Did I cover everything? Um, I want you to know that we appreciate you again for being here. And uh, again, this, this, this whole message has just been outstanding. And I think it's going to really make a difference in your life. But you're going to have to choose now. You can't stand straddling the fence. It's time to throw all of the stuff away that ain't God and get in to alignment with the kingdom because the time is short and it's, it's time for us to move forward. Amen. Well, I love you. Father, we thank you so much for the day. We give you glory and honor and praise for everything that you said. Just remember, we always close this out the same way. The word of God is life. The word of God is alive. And this word of God is living in us. You be blessed and have a great, great week.